I welcome all of you to the class. As far as today's lecture is concerned, in today's lecture, we'll be talking about finding the equation of the deflection curve in, in, in case of the beams, which are known as the uh, statically indeterminate beams. So today, we'll be talking about statically. Today, our talk will be about statically uh, indeterminate beams. Now, as far as the statically indeterminate beams are concerned, let me take an example. Again, I will start with an example of a cantilever beam. A cantilever beam is a beam which is fixed at one end and is free at another end, okay? This is a case for us. Now let's suppose that this beam is subjected to a sort of load. Let me suppose a concentrated load. And the magnitude of this load is, say, for example, P. Okay. And the span of this beam is equal to L. Now we know from the basic statics, stat statics that for this beam to be in static equilibrium, okay, there has to be a reaction at the fixed end, what we represent as RA. Okay. So this RA is created in response to the load. P, number one. Apart from this, at this fixed end, there will also be a, a moment reaction that we represent by M such that this moment M, or we represent this as M at end A, fixed end, this is end A, and this is end B. This moment M A is created in response to the moment created by the load P because load P will create the moment that will be equal to P into L, okay? So the moment created by the load P will be equal to P into L. So in order to uh, work, in order to nullify the effect of this moment, a moment will be created at end A, that's called M A. So in this case, we are having two unknowns. We are having reaction R A is one of our unknown, and the moment at end A is our unknown, okay? Now, how do we find the value of R A and R B? So we say these are our two unknowns. These are our two unknowns. And how do we find the value of these unknowns? We find the value of these two unknowns with the help of two equilibrium equations. First equilibrium equation we have uh, Ra minus P equal to zero. And second equilibrium equation we have Ma minus PL equal zero, okay? So we are having two unknowns and corresponding to two unknowns, we are having two uh, equilibrium equations. So we have, Two equilibrium equations and we are having two unknowns such a case of the beam is known as statically determinate beam this we say this is a statically determinate beam okay so this is a case of statical determinacy statically determinate beam okay when the number of unknowns is equal to the number of reactions now what we do let's take the cantilever example again fine so as we take an example of a cantilever beam Now let's suppose that this beam, instead of being free at one end, is supported. Okay, maybe we are having a roller support, or let's say we are having a pin support here. Let's suppose, let's take a pin here. Let's suppose it is supported at end B. Okay. This is supported at end. This is end A. Fine. Now, Let's suppose that this beam is now subjected to the concentrated load and the concentrated load is say, for example, P, fine. Now, what will happen in response to the concentrated load, the reactions will be generated. One reaction will be at end A. That's what we call as RA. Another reaction will be generated at end B. That's what we call as RB, okay? Since at the pin end, there is no moment at all. There is no moment reaction. Pin does not, there is no moment reaction. Pin support and roller supports are those supports that do not produce any moment reaction, okay? But at the fixed end, we are having the moment reaction that will be 
M A. Okay, so we are now having three unknowns in this case. We have unknown M A, we have unknown reaction R A, and we have unknown reaction R B. So our number of unknowns are three. And how many equilibrium equations we have? We have one equilibrium equation is R A plus R B minus P equal to zero. This is one of our equilibrium equation. And another equilibrium equation for us is if we take moments about an axis passing through point A, we'll be having M A. And let's suppose that this distance is L1. This distance is say, for example, L2. And we'll be having minus P L1 plus R B multiplied by L1 plus L2 is equal to zero. These are the two uh, equilibrium equations in front of us, okay? So we have two equilibrium equations, but we're having three unknowns. In order to find the values of three unknowns, we should have three equations. But how many equations we're having in hand? We just have two equations. Such a case of the beam is known as statically indeterminate beam. We say this is statically indeterminate. Statically indeterminate. There is statical indeterminacy in this beam. This is a statically indeterminate beam, okay? So this type of a beam, we say this is statically indeterminate beam. Now the question is, or we can at least say, we're having three number of reactions, okay? Number of reactions are three, and the equilibrium equations are just two. Three minus two is one. We say that this beam is having statical indeterminacy of one. Statical indeterminacy of one. This beam is having statical indeterminacy equal one, okay? So number of unknowns minus number of equilibrium equations is equal the what is also known as the degree of indeterminacy, okay? This is also known as the degree of indeterminacy. So we say that this beam is statically indeterminate of first degree. Statically indeterminate of first degree, okay? Apart from this, if we uh, have a beam that is fixed at both ends, this is also a statically indeterminate beam. We have a beam, it's fixed at one end and it's fixed at another end, okay? This is called fixed fixed beam, okay? This type of beam is known as a fixed fixed beam, okay? This is a fixed fixed beam, okay? If you look at this fixed fixed beam, this beam is also statically indeterminate. Let's suppose we're applying load. Again, let's suppose we apply a concentrated load, okay? Then at end A, you will be having the reactions. You will be having reaction here. Let, let's call this as RA. We'll be having reaction here. Let's call that as RB. And we know fixed end produces the moment reaction at, as well. That moment reaction here is MA. And the moment reaction here is MB. Now we are having how many unknowns? We are having one, two, three, and four unknowns. Again, we'll be having two equilibrium equation. Four unknowns minus two equilibrium equation. We say this beam is statically indeterminate of second degree. There is statical indeterminacy of degree two in this case of beam. Now, what is our present topic is to find the uh, find the equation of the deflection curve in, the, in, in these statically indeterminate beams, okay? So let me take a case of uh, statically indeterminacy. Let me take the first case. Let's suppose we are having a beam. Uh, let's uh, take a beam which is uh, a cantilever beam. Let's talk about a cantilever itself. It is a roller sport at one end. It has a roller sport here. and it's fixed at another end. This is sometimes called propped cantilever beam, okay? Let's say this is end A, and let's say this is end B, okay? So the total span of this beam is say, for example, L. L is the total span of this beam, fine? And let's suppose that this beam is subjected to a a distributed load and that is in the form of a triangle. It is subjected to a triangularly distributed load.
okay such that the intensity of load at the fixed end is w naught okay and we have to find the deflection of this beam okay so what we do let's use the method of sections first of all let's draw a section let's draw a section over here okay at a distance x from the from this very end okay apart from this you should always start with the free body diagram at end a you will be having the reaction that's what we call as ra and at end b will be having the reaction that's what we call as reaction rb okay apart from this we'll be having the moment here that's what we call as mb it's fixed beam here the moment here will be mb so as we have taken this section let's isolate this section out so as we take this section out we have a portion we have a portion that's on the rollers and this portion has been extracted so this will be the portion of the triangularly distributed load on this very section okay and this length is say for example x where we have taken the section let's suppose here the shear force is v and the bending moment say for example here is m okay so first of all let's find how much will be the intensity of the load at a distance x when length is l okay intensity of the load at a distance l is equal w naught when length is one unit intensity of the load will be w naught divided by l when the distance is x intensity of the load will be w naught by l into x so this is the intensity of the load we can write here this perpendicular here will be w naught divided by l into x okay fine now we know from statics a distributed load can be represented in terms of a concentrated load acting at the centroid therefore we can also represent this diagram this load can also be represented in terms of a single load this load we can represent in terms of a single concentrated load we can say it's acting over here okay since i will write now in the form of dash dashed lines because i have represented it in terms of a concentrated load now okay that will be acting at the centroid of this right angle triangle such that the base of this right angle triangle is x the perpendicular of this right angle triangle is w naught divided by l into x okay now where is the centroid of a right angle triangle we know from the perpendicular side from the right 90 degree angle side from the perpendicular side The, the 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 centroid is at a distance of one third of l that is one third of x such that this distance from here to here is two third of x we know this concept very well okay now let's take the moments about an axis passing through the point where we have drawn the section let's take the moments about an axis passing through this very axis okay so first of all we'll be having the moment because of this ra okay the moment because of ra will be ra into x and that is clockwise minus ra into x okay and we'll be having moment because of this concentrated equilibrium load okay so that is it's it's anti clockwise its magnitude will be uh, perpendicular distance is 1 by 3 of x multiplied by the load the load is 2/3 of x okay that is 2 by 3 of x okay uh, sorry not 2 by 3 of x here i need to make a correction this is not 2 3 of x i have to make a correction over here that is what will be the mag magnitude of this load the magnitude of this load will be area of the triangle that is half of base that's x into perpendicular perpendicular is w not divided by l into x okay so i will write here magnitude of the load is 1 by 2 w not by l into x square and we also have the moment over here that is m so plus m is equal to 0 so what it will be 
So if you take it on the right hand side, the M will become equal R A into X. M will be equal R A into X. Okay. R A into X minus one by six W naught by L X Q. Okay, so this is the moment in this beam. But there is one important thing that this moment that we have calculated that is in this beam, this moment is a function of this RA. RA is what is known as a reaction, unknown reaction for us. It's an unknown reaction for us. It's an unknown reaction for us, okay? So in case of statically indeterminate beams, we're expressing moment in terms of reactions, RA. Now, uh, what we will do, apply the equation. We know EI, EI D2 nu by dx2 is equal to m in case of the beam, okay? That's equal to rax, raox minus w0 xq divided by six times l, okay? So let's integrate it once. As we integrate it once, we'll get ei uh, d nu by dx, ei d nu by dx is equal to 1 by 2 Ra x square minus W naught by, this will be 2, okay? 2 into L, x raised to power 4 plus constant of integration, C1, okay? If we integrate it once, fine. So the integration once uh, will give us, uh, by the way, I'm, this is integrating once again, it'll give us EI d nu by dx I have to make a correction over here. That is, this will be, sorry, this will be 24. I'm sorry. It's not. This will be 24. Again. Okay. So as we so, uh, integrate it once again, this is AI nu is equal 1 by 6 RA X cube. 1 by 6 RA X cube minus W naught divided by uh, 120 minus 120 into L X raised to power 5 plus C1 X plus C2. Okay. Now we are having, this is the equation of our, this equation is the equation of our deflection curve because this tells us how the deflection will happen in this B. Okay. Now, but this deflection equation is in terms of C1, in terms of C2, and in terms of this RA, which is quite unknown to us. So we will go to the basic procedure that is applying the boundary conditions. So let's apply the boundary conditions, okay? So as far as our boundary conditions are concerned, we will write at x is equal to zero. The value of our deflection is zero. Why? Here, at this point, there is no value of deflection because the beam is supported, okay? Similarly, at x is equal to L, the value of deflection is again equals zero. At x is equal to L, the value of the value of deflection at x is equal to L is also equal to zero. Okay. Now, what else uh, we have? We have one more boundary condition that is quite uh, interesting boundary condition. Okay, because uh, when you have a beam which is fixed at one end, you should always, always, always remember that at the fixed end, the beam does not deflect as well as from the fixed end up to a particular distance. That is, say for example, if the beam is fixed here, from the fixed end, 
to a certain distance. Okay, the beam does not deflect up to a certain distance. Up to a certain distance, the beam rem remains straight. Okay, it maintains its it maintains its geometry. Okay, so from the fixed end up to a certain distance, the beam deflection curve follows a path, uh, so follows a straight line such that at the fixed end, you have deflection is equal to zero, as well as if you draw a tangent to the curve, okay, after the application of the load, the value of the slope will also be equal to zero because that tangent will essentially be parallel, will be parallel to the axis of the beam. That is d nu by dx will be equal to zero at the fixed end. That is, I mean to say at x is equal to L, at x is equal to L, we will be having one more condition. At x is equal to L, the value of d nu by dx will be equal to zero. The tangent drawn to the curve will be parallel to the axis. Apply these conditions. First condition is, as we apply x is equal to zero, nu is equal to zero. So we will apply here. So nu is equal to zero. This term is zero. This term is zero. This term is zero. Automatically, from this equation, we'll directly get the value of C2 is equal to uh, zero. Fine. That's one important piece. Second equation for us is nu is equal to zero at x is equal to L. Now take this equation again. Okay. Now nu is equal to zero. This term, the, so left hand side is zero. In, in place of x, we have to write x is equal to L with C2 equal to zero. So the equation that we will get from here, from this case, the equation that we will get will be zero is equal to 1 by 6 Ra, uh, 1 by 6, 1 by 6 Ra L cube minus W naught by 120L, L raised to power 5 plus C1 into L. C2 is already equal to 0. And from this equation, we'll substitute this equation over here in this case. Okay, that is d nu by dx is equal to zero at x is equal to l. So from here, what we will get, we'll get zero is equal to r a l square divided by two minus w naught l raised to power four divided by 24 l plus c1. Now we are having two equation. We have this equation and we have this equation. Both these two equations are in terms of Ra and C1. Ra and C1. We have two equations and two unknowns. So we need to solve these two equations. So once we solve these equations, we'll get the value of Ra is equal 1 by 10 W0 into L. W0 is known to us. L is also known to us. And the value of C1 will come out equal, which I'm leaving as a homework to students. C1 will be minus 100 and minus one by 120 uh, W naught L cube. Okay, so substitute the value of Ra in this equation and C1 in this equation will obtain the equation of the deflection curve. So the equation of the deflection curve will be then obtained from this equation once we substitute the value of Ra and we substitute the value of C1. So this is the procedure of finding the equation of the deflection curve in, in, in case of statically indeterminate beams. And the important thing we start with is expressing the moment reaction in terms of the redundance. Okay, so if you have a redundant reaction, you have to explain, you have to express your moment in terms of the redundant reactions. Okay, and then you have to follow accordingly as we have been following in case of statically determinate cases. Okay. So we have we have again taken a uh, a beam which is now fixed at an, another end, okay, such that this is attached with a ceiling here. This length is given to us as L two, and this length over here is given to us as equal L one. Okay, fine. Now what we have to do the intensity this beam is subjected to a, a uniformly distributed load. Its intensity is W. This end is B, uh, this end is A, and this end is given to us as N C. Okay. Now, what we have to do, we have to calculate. Now, the question is like we have a beam. Okay. This beam is subjected to a uniformly distributed load of intensity W. But at the free end, the beam is 
attached with the ceiling with the help of a rope such that the length of the rope is L2. Now, how much is the reaction force produced in the rope L2? That is, this load will try to move the entire beam down. Okay, so since this beam has a tendency of going down because of the uniformly distributed load W, this um, rope over here will produce a reaction force and the reaction force will be produced by this rope and it will be produced in the upward, it will be produced in the upward direction. Okay, and let's call this, let's say that the force produced here is F, AC, force produced in the wire or force produced in the row, AC. Apart from this, we'll be having the reaction produced at the fixed end, that's what we call as RB. And we will also be having a moment at the fixed end, that is what we will be calling as MB, fine. So first of all, let's write, let's draw the free body diagram. So if you draw the free body diagram, or let me directly take a section over here, and write the moment equation. Once we take the, once we take a section out here, and let's suppose here the shear force is V, and the bending moment here is M. Okay. Now and take the moments about an axis passing through the point where you have taken the section. Then we'll be having the moment because of this. The moment is M, which we are assuming at the cross section. The moment because of this FAC will be clockwise. That is minus FAC multiplied by the force arm. This section has been taken at a distance x, so we'll write FAC into x, okay? And how much will be this load that is now acting is in the form of a rectangle. It can be assumed that it's acting at the center. Its magnitude is equal to W into x, okay? The area of the load diagram, such that uh, this distance is given to us, this distance is, this total distance that is given to us uh, is x such that this distance will be x by 2. It will act at the center, okay? So it will be plus w x into x by 2 is equal to 0. So the moment equation will be m will be equal f a c into x minus w x square divided by two, okay? So this is how the equation is behaving, fine, fine. Apart from this, uh, there is something uh, very important for us uh, to realize, that is um, this moment again is in terms of the reaction FAC. FAC is unknown to us because this beam is statically indeterminate. We are having FAC as one unknown. We are having MB one unknown. We are having RB as one. We are having three unknowns. And always we have two equilibrium equations over here. So this is a beam of statical indeterminacy. So what you will do then, we will again apply the equation EI D2 nu by DX2 is equal to the moment that is FAC FAC into X minus WX square divided by two. So integrate it once, you will get it EI D nu by DX is equal to FAC X square by two minus WX cube by six plus the first constant of integration that is C1. Integrate it once again, that is EI nu is equal FAC X cube by six minus W X raised power four divided by 24 plus C1 X plus C2. So you have two constants of integration, C1 and C2. What will be the boundary conditions for us? The boundary conditions are, we can easily say that at nu is equal to zero, at X is equal to L, at this fixed end, at this fixed end, the value of the deflection is zero. This is one boundary condition. Second boundary condition is again at the fixed end because I have been saying that at the from at a certain up to a certain distance from the fixed end, the beam remains straight. Okay, such that d nu by dx is equal to zero at x is equal to its slope is also equal to zero. The tangent drawn to the beam deflection curve at x is equal to b remains parallel to the x-axis, okay? So with these two boundary conditions, okay? 
as we apply these two boundary conditions, we can find the value of C1 and C2. So we can directly write from here at x is equal to L, d nu by dx is equal to zero in place of x, you put x is equal to L, x is equal to L, and d nu by dx is equal to zero. So from here, we'll obtain the value of C1 in terms of FAC. And from here, nu is equal to zero at, sorry, uh, at x is equal to L. So substitute x is equal to L, x is equal to L over here. So what you will obtain, you will obtain the value in terms of, you will obtain an equation in terms of C1 and C2. Substitute for, solve the two equations for C1 and C2, okay? So once we will be solving for substituting for C1 and C2, we'll get the value of C1 as well as the value of C2. Substitute the back the values of C1 and C2 in these equations, okay? So that we obtain the value of nu. We obtain the value of nu, which is an equation of the deflection curve, fine. Now, as we obtain the value of nu, that is quite understandable, but what we have to find, we have to find the value of FEC as well. Okay, first step for all of us will be finding the value of FEC. Once the value of FEC is obtained, then we need to modify this equation to find the value of, sorry. Once we find the value of deflection curve, nu, we'll modify the equation to find the value of FEC, which I think I will be talking in the tomorrow's class, how to find the value of FEC.